over the Villa Rosa Kempinski. And you know, if it's Wednesday, it's all about politics 101. But tonight, I want to start this show in a different way. I want to start with a comment because I literally just came back from Kigali, Rwanda. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Barely 22 years ago, 10,000 people were being slaughtered every single day for a hundred days. If you do the math on that, that means that a million people were killed in the space of a hundred days. And if you go to Kigali, just a stone's throw away from the capital is a place called the Rwanda Genocide Memorial. You go through and you, you go for a tour for about 30 minutes and then there's a place where there's an everlasting flame and you're standing literally on the bones of half a million people because the other half a million are spread across the country but you're standing on the bones of half a million people the reason i'm saying this folks is that what we're doing to each other right now we're treading on very dangerous ground an election is more than a year away and already the hate is palpable not only physically but also on social media we need to take stock we need to s sit back and reevaluate where we want to take this nation we're going to start that tonight and yes many of you keep saying that we talk over and over again but i keep saying the moment we stop talking is the moment we start fighting so tonight i've got two very sober very smart very efficient brilliant politicians on the bench those who don't preach hate those who call things like they see it those who don't abuse others for what they are so let's talk let's speak let's tweet let's get this thing going because frankly there is no other kenya to go to i'll tell you that for free on my far right member of parliament for kibra He's a man, I tell you, young, smart, brilliant politician. He is the future, the face of the future of Kenya. Ken Okoth, his Twitter handle is at Okoth Kenneth. The man in the middle, he's been in humanitarian service for more than 30 years before he became member of parliament for Camp Kunji. And he almost died before he became member of parliament for Camp Kunji. Some idiot threw a grenade in one of his rallies shattered one of his legs he still walks with a limp but he's still committed to the people of kamkunji and the people of kenya yusuf hassan his twitter handle is at mp yusuf hassan mine is at koinanga jeff let's be frank and let's talk the talk because i tell you rwanda is a perfect example an hour and 20 minutes flight away is the face of evil but they overcame it can we the hashtag we're using tonight is chorea ukabila i'll say that again the hashtag is chorea ukabila let's get started gentlemen good to see you thanks much to see you thanks again. so much for coming Mushimua. thank you Jeff. you know and i and you know I, the reason i called you guys is you guys are you know let's face it out of the 350 or so members of uh, parliamentarians you guys are the most sober and that's saying a lot because there are some of you yes there's eight legislators in jail in prison right now they're cooling their heels for four days because of the hate that's been emanating and which we let's, let's start with you kenogoth it's ugly out there man it's ugly and not just in your constituency because your people now they spill over onto gong road and they block the whole streets and everything but it's ugly in general, isn't it? It's ugly in general, and I would go back to what you've said about Rwanda. I've also been to Kigali, and it sobers you up. And uh, you see how easily you can lose uh, what we have. The peace we have in Kenya, it's, it's, it's precious. And I think we need re leadership with responsibility from both sides. And uh, just this week, somebody told me, Ken, you're in ODM, you're in COD, you're a politician, you're young, you have to think of re-election. 
What if you'll never be re-elected? <laughs> and this is your only chance to have a platform to speak and represent and be a member of the National Assembly. To be true to yourself, what would you say? And I would say all the nonsense has to stop. Because I know in 2008 my family were refugees. They were trying to get out to Kisumu. And then the news came out from Kibera. And the news came out that people were being pulled out of buses in Naivasha. Mm -hmm. So the only safe other escape was get on a bus to Arusha, south. And they were in uh, Arusha for three, four months, relying on the generosity of strangers, new friends we're looking at. I have worked in Tanzania, and um, it's a great country, generous people, but it's not Kenya. Kenya is a very good country. For me to think that somehow or another, we've had post-election violence, now we are having really what seems like people are gearing up for pre-election violence, mm. and that we could send Kenyans, millions, hundreds of thousands of them, children, women, as refugees to Tanzania. Tanzania could say, we can't hold this many Kenyans, the same way we are saying, we can't hold this many Somalis in Dadaab, and say, let them send them on to Malawi. Yes. I have been to Malawi. Malawi is a poor country, people are hungry. Mm -hmm. They're fishing for mena in that lake, they're eating millet, now our people as refugees there. So I think all leaders need to step back on both sides and ask themselves, what are you doing? And we think about our national anthem, I was discovering with, with our Honorable Asan before. Think about our national anthem. Oh God of all creation, we sing that, we believe in that, it's in our national document. Every leader in Kenya, is that God of all creation that you believe in and worship in this holy month of Ramadan as a Christian? as a Jew, as a Hindu, whatever faith in that Kenya. Are they proud of you when you're on that stage, in front of people of your own ethnicity or in front of people of your own party, when you're saying what you're saying? Is that God proud with you? How would they ju judge you? Good point. You, Moshimua, you just heard what Moshimua Kenokov just said. And you were involved in humanitarian service for decades. Tell these people who have no clue what it's like when you are meeting refugees, people who are professionals, lawyers, doctors, politicians, you name it, professionals, reduced to living in tents. Well, not only uh, reduced to living in tents. First of all, we had a glimpse of what uh, a conflict and violence can bring in 2008. And I can tell you, having been in countries which are at uh, war, you don't want to go there. Believe me, you. The horrors of war, uh, war kills. It maims, it destroys everything, and you become a refugee. And I can tell you that nobody wants to be a refugee. For, for example, I have been in exile for two decades uh, during the Moi Kano regime. I don't want uh, my family, my friends, uh, to be refugees ever again. I don't want any Kenyan to be a refugee ever again. And I think we must start by condemning uh, the the outrage that we've had of, of people uh, selling, preaching uh, ugly uh, messages of incitement, of hate. Uh, and I want, must say that I'm outraged and I'm disgusted by it. We don't want this escalating uh, negative ethnicity, uh, threats, attacks and incitement uh, that is already raising the political temperature in our country and uh, is already sparking uh, violence in some parts of the country mm. and I uh, as um, my fellow MP has said all um, of us need to pull back we need to condemn we need to stand back before these negative elements push us to the abyss that's not where we want to go as Kenyans Kenya has a lot of potential Kenya has a better future but unless we can come together uh, and I don't believe that any political party uh, can be elected to office because some members of that particular party are uh, preaching uh, negative mm. uh, hatred yeah. against others. Yeah. I think the Kenyan public is intelligent enough to know that they would elect leaders uh, who show what they have done but we're not performance. But we're not, Moshima. Let's face it, we're not intelligent enough because we've elected the Moses Couriers, the White Titos of this world. And, and, and let's face it, Moshima, the arrest, or rather, the, the, the temporary cooling off, if you will, the four days in, in, in cells of everyone from Waitito to Kuria to Muthama to Aisha to Mutua, 
to Timothy Busira. Will it help? Does it? Will it make a difference? I think uh, if we look at um, the issue you, as you're bringing it up, um, first of all, who are the Kenyan voters and what are their priorities? And what are the stories media help to tell them? What are the political parties help to tell them? So I think we have to go back to the political parties and say chapter 6 on integrity, mm -hmm. uh, the chapter 10 on national values, values of unity, values of uh, respecting all ethnicities. I think our people deserve much more credit, and especially young people, and I said it here one other time, are very smart. Last night in Kibra, we had a fire that was sparked and that could have easily blown up, and it was going to be religious because one demonstration started against the comments of Honorable Moses Kuria, MP for Gatundu, that he had said something against the uh, Prime Minister, which I can't repeat on air. Yeah. Um, I don't want to amplify that. But that upset the supporters in Kibra genuinely. They went out on a demonstration, they came back, they were home in the evening. Around 7 p.m., somebody threw stones at a mosque in Kibra. And it was alleged, now these are the demonstrators right. have attacked a mosque, right. innocent, in right. the holy month of Ramadan. Some young people in the mosque say, we will retaliate and teach these people a lesson. And it took a lot of leadership at the ground level. I had to step back myself because I'm a politician identified with one party and one side for that moment. Step back and let other people, the DC, the chiefs, the local community leaders, to spend all night How ugly was talking it? To it was very ugly, malicious. It doesn't take very much to get a gang of boys with weapons, yeah. crude weapons. Yeah. And I don't think if we went down that line, it would take very long in a week or two to get the more sophisticated weapon. Yes. So it was potentially ugly. But it restores my hope because then the people of Kibra ask themselves, if we kill these neighbors or ourselves and burn them, what do we gain by it? This morning, we spent six hours with all these community leaders there were apologies issued for the attack on the mosque. We're fixing the mosque. This Friday, we're having a community iftar where Christians who have never stepped in a mosque will come and share the breaking of the fast with Muslims in Kibra and understand that these are our brothers. We don't hate them. We might have misunderstandings and suspicions. And the Muslim leaders were very magnanimous and said, whatever happened is very insulting and painful and personal to us. Mm. May it never happen again. Please, you understand. And as you say, the moment we stop talking is about we had six hours of talking today wow. and wow. Kibra is peaceful now. Wow. So I think the leadership has to be shared and I think we have much more credit to our people. Mm. Even in the people in Kibra that you may think don't know better, they're very sophisticated. Yeah. They've said, for instance, the right to protest, IBC, can continue. But please, when you go to picket, don't cause chaos in Kibra. But who are, who are those we see on the streets then on Gong Road? Who are those people? They're all Kibra people. So what we are negotiating and uh, inculcating is you have a right to picket. And the police, we engage the police today, come with patrol vehicles, open the road in front, patrol the back of the demonstration, let the demonstrators understand you're there to protect them from infiltrators, from pickpockets and criminals. Yeah. Keep them safe so when you're walking on Gong Road, you're not run over by a vehicle. That is a right in the Constitution. Okay. What you don't have a right is to attack somebody who's driving their car to work. Correct. That is it. So we're changing the paradigm on that. It will take a while and any mistakes that have happened, we regret and it's very shameful. Mm. But we're moving to a point where even the police have to understand the people of Kibra are not their enemies. They have a duty to protect mm. us and serve us. And I think last night we saw that. The police said, if you need us, we're willing to step in, but let us give you, the local leaders, a first chance to talk amongst yeah. yourselves yeah. and scale this thing down, yeah. and it's been good so far. Moshimua, don't you all, as members of parliament, when you get into parliament, is it a, an oath you all swear that you will protect the constitution? Isn't this something that you all swear? Absolutely. In fact, as a me all members of parliament uh, have to take an oath to protect to uphold, to preserve, and to defend the Constitution. And I think if you look at the preamble of our Constitution, mm. it is very, very clear on what it, where it stands. For example, um, it's proud of our ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity. From the